This is the first debate we've had in the Assembly since our law on abortion was changed. I'm not intending that the debate should be a discussion of how we got here, although in passing it must be noted that we've been subjected to constitutional indignities that I could never have imagined a year ago. Neither Wales nor Scotland would ever countenance being subject to the extraordinary denial of constitutional due process that has been meted out towards Northern Ireland on this issue. There are occasions in life, not very often, but sometimes, when we get to meet someone who is truly inspirational, someone whose passion and vision changes the way in which we see the world. This is the case when you meet Heidi Crowder, the young woman whose name is in the motion before our house today. Heidi's 24 and she has Down syndrome. She works in a children's hair salon and next month on Independence Day, the 4th of July, she will marry her fiance, James Carter, who also has Down syndrome and who Heidi describes as gorgeous. This lady is a joy and brings joy. When you leave a conversation with Heidi, you leave with your heart full. Heidi Crowder is an extraordinary human being. Since February, she's been in the news because she is challenging the current law in England and Wales, which allows abortion up to birth in cases of disabilities, but not in other circumstances. Heidi describes the current law in Great Britain as offensive and hurtful. Why would we countenance in 2020 the disability discrimination that the Westminster Parliament was persuaded to vote for 30 years ago in 1990, before the advent of disability discrimination legislation and before the UK became a signatory to the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities? We cannot and must not separate the regulations from the people to whom they would apply. The reason why the general upper limit for abortion in Great Britain was set at 24 weeks in 1990 is because then 24 weeks was regarded as the point of viability, that is, the point at which a baby could survive outside the womb. Today, things have advanced, and well over 50% of babies born at 24 weeks now survive, and as gestation progresses, the figure becomes much higher. Notwithstanding this fact, Regulation 7.1b of the abortion regulations allows abortion up to birth in circumstances when, if the child were born, it would suffer from such physical or mental impairment as to be seriously disabled. In England and Wales, we know from abortion statistics that abortions on the ground of cleft palate, cleft lip and club foot, all conditions that can be addressed through surgery, are deemed to meet the threshold of seriously disabled and do happen. The problem with this, as Heidi and other disabled people point out, is simple. It means clearly saying that viable human beings with non-fatal disabilities and conditions like Down syndrome are worthy of less protection under the law than viable human beings who are deemed to be able-bodied. And this in turn clearly says that people with Down syndrome or other disabilities are of less value than people without disabilities. This is completely unacceptable in 2020. If we do not uphold this motion, we are signaling to every person with a disability that their life is valued differently to others. It is wholly wrong for these discriminatory provisions to have been forced upon us. In the last 30 years since 1990, Northern Ireland, like every jurisdiction in the UK, has introduced legal protections for individuals with disabilities. These laws seek to illustrate that those with disabilities are equal to everyone else. The Disability Discrimination Act 95 protects the rights of persons with disabilities. The Northern Ireland Act 98 placed a statutory duty on public authorities to have due regard to the need to promote equality of opportunity for persons with a disability. In 2006, the Disability Discrimination Northern Ireland Order further amended the DDA, including a requirement that public authorities promote positive attitudes towards disabled persons. In 2009, the UK as a whole ratified the UN CRPD. These laws are just laws. They reflect the fact that each and every person, regardless of ability or disability, is of value and worth. Do we wish to negate all this progress? 
Given the changes in the last 30 years, it is astonishing that the UK government should give Northern Ireland the 1990 legislation in 2020. There has been no attempt to consider whether this legislation is suitable in a 2020 Northern Ireland context. The only concession to bringing the provision up to date is to change the language from seriously handicapped to seriously disabled. Isn't seriously disabled quite a high threshold? The threshold seriously disabled in Regulation 7 has exactly the same meaning as seriously handicapped in the 1967 Act. Ironically, the change from handicapped to disabled simply reflects the fact that the word handicapped is now rightly rejected as pejorative by disabled people, missing the more basic point that if one wants to update the law to reflect changing attitudes to disability, the more appropriate way of doing this would be not to allow abortion on this basis at all. It is extremely disturbing that the government has chosen to ignore the views of the UNCRPD in its latest report on the UK, which stated, the committee is concerned about perceptions in society that stigmatise persons with disabilities and about the termination of pregnancy at any stage on the basis of fetal impairment. The committee recommends that the UK amend its abortion law accordingly without legalising selective abortion on the grounds of fetal deficiency. Nor has the UK government acknowledged the views of the Supreme Court, which has considered the issue of whether under the European Convention there is a human right to abortion in cases of non-fatal disability. The court, albeit in a non-binding judgment, found that no such right exists. Indeed, Lord Kerr in his remarks stated, UNCRPD is based on the premise that if abortion is permissible, there should be no discrimination on the basis that the fetus, because of a defect, will result in a child being born with a physical or mental disability. He also said, many children born with disabilities, even grave disabilities, lead happy, fulfilled lives. In many instances, they enrich and bring joy to their families and those who come into contact with them. I think everyone in this assembly would agree with this assessment. In truth, the UK government's explanatory memorandum makes it plain that rather than being guided by the CEDAW report, which actually suggests far more modest changes to Northern Ireland's abortion laws than those in the regulations, its guiding concern is to make sure that any abortion a woman can have in England can also be had in Northern Ireland. That's why, for all the talk about 12 weeks, the regulations actually allow abortion up to 24 weeks on effectively the same grounds as apply in England and up until birth in cases of disability. Neither of these provisions is required by CEDAW. Lord Shinkwin, who is seriously disabled, introduced the Abortion Disability Equality Act Bill in the 2016-17 session of the Westminster Parliament. He said, I utterly reject this medical mindset that clings to the idea that a disabled baby is a medical failure to be eradicated through abortion. I beg no one for my equality. I know I have as much right as anyone to be alive. The Charity Disability Rights UK, commenting on Lord Shinkwin's bill, said, fundamentally, it is about equality. Wherever Parliament sets the number of weeks after which abortion is not permitted, it should be exactly the same whether the pregnancy is likely to result in a disabled or a non-disabled child. All lives are equal. In closing, let's be crystal clear about what voting for this motion means. You'll be voting to say that Northern Ireland rejects abortion law which directly discriminates against a human being purely on the basis of disability. Only this group of viable humans can be aborted up to term. You'll be saying that this assembly does not agree that it is right that unborn children with Down syndrome or cleft palate can be aborted just because they have those conditions. You will be voting to reject the imposition of abortion legislation on Northern Ireland. Abortion law is a devolved matter and we are responsible for reflecting our society's values in this area, not Great Britain. You will be voting for life. I shall leave you with the words of Heidi Crowder. It makes me feel as though I shouldn't exist in the world. Is that the message this House and we as individuals want to send to our disabled community? Is this who we are? Heidi said, my life has as much value as anyone else's. I am asking all MLAs to reject Westminster's regulations. Please don't vote for more discrimination against people like me. Please let Northern Ireland continue to be a country where disabled people are valued. 
I implore you to support this motion.